All right, thanks. Uh, yeah, so this is about uh, statistical learning with a nuisance component. Uh, and our problem is sort of motivated by the fact that, uh, you know, in the last few years, machine learning has uh, come to play a larger and larger role in, uh, like, decision-making problems. And these are two different types of problems that have different goals. So, you know, in machine learning, we're, we're usually interested in, uh, you know, making predictions from data. You know, like, does, a, does an image contain a cat or a dog? And, uh, you know, in decision making, we're kind of more interested in, like, counterfactual inferences. Like, maybe I have a data set where one action would ma was made. Uh, what would have changed if I had made a different action? So these are kind of two different goals. But there's a growing body of work that shows that, uh, you know, machine learning can be useful for these counterfactual inference tasks. It's just that we need to do additional work on top to sort of de-bias the predictions that come out of machine learning. Uh, so the goal of this work is to sort of unify all these efforts under the blanket of statistical learning and uh, give general tools for using statistical learning to solve counterfactual inference problems. And uh, the key tool we're going to use to do this is what's called uh, nuisance parameters. So the idea of using nuisance parameters to debias our predictions. So to make this a little bit more concrete, I'll focus on uh, the problem of policy learning or uh, sort of like an observational version of contextual bandits. So this is a setting where we're going to get n triples uh, of features, uh, binary treatments or actions, which are called T, and rewards, IID. And you know, for, for each uh, example, we only see the reward of the treatment that was taken, uh, not the treatment that was not taken. So you know, if the treatment that was taken was one, we just see the reward of you know, treatment one. And our goal is to just to find a policy that maximizes the expected reward under this distribution. Uh, the challenge is just that because I only saw the, treatment, the reward for the treatment that was taken, I can't just evaluate the sample version of this objective directly. Uh, so there's a few uh, approaches to getting around this. Uh, the first one's called the direct method, and this is just going to estimate the uh, conditional mean of the rewards for each treatment, and then plug this in as an estimate. That is high bias, but you can also do what's called inverse propensity weighting. So this is going to estimate the conditional probabilities for each, uh, for each treatment. And I should emphasize this is a purely observational setting. So we don't know how the treatments were generated, but we can estimate these probabilities, and we can use these to come up with an unbiased estimator for the loss. So this gives us something with uh, low bias but high variance. And lastly, we can do what's called doubly robust, but get, which estimates these both and gives kind of the best of both worlds. But what unifies all of these approaches is that we have a target parameter we're interested in, which is just the policy that maximizes the reward. But we're estimating these other nuisance parameters as a means to sort of evaluating this policy. So this is going to uh, lead us to define a general framework we call statistical learning with a nuisance component. So in this setting, we're going to have a population risk L, which depends on a target parameter theta and a nuisance parameter G. Um, there's a true unknown nuisance parameter that's called G naught. And what we'd like to do is find the target parameter that minimizes this risk when G naught is plugged in. But you know, just like the, uh, uh, just like the, the, the policy learning setting, the problem is just that we don't know G naught, so we can't just you know immediately start minimizing the risk to find theta. All right. So we, of course one could always imagine trying to estimate G just like we did in the last example, but we're going to be sort of particular about how we define performance in this setting. And in particular, our goal is going to be to get what's called an Oracle excess risk bound. So this will be an excess risk bound where the risk depends on the complexity of the class that the target belongs to, but not the complexity of the class that the uh, nuisance belongs to. So we can get away with using like perhaps a very big class of nuisance parameters without paying for it in the sample complexity. Um, and this, this basic formulation, you know, it encompasses policy learning, uh, treatment effect estimation, uh, and a number of other, uh, you know, different tasks. And in some sense, our contributions here are to uh, you know, just formalize the basic problem to, to unify all these uh, tasks and to develop general algorithms and analyses tools to solve these problems. So let me show how we analyze these uh, problems. So uh, our core idea will be to just to reduce to statistical learning. So the idea is statistical learning is really good at giving me excess risk bounds when the loss is known. So you know, like when I can evaluate the loss. Uh, so we're just gonna do a meta algorithm that takes advantage of this. So we're gonna split our samples in half. We're gonna get an estimate for the nuisance on the first half where this, uh, the error here is gonna depend on this term R of G, which is like the statistical error for the, the, the nuisance class. And then we're just going to plug in this estimator into a statistical learning algorithm 
that gives an excess risk bound whenever the nuisance value is fixed. So the question now is just, when is this robust in the sense that when does this give me uh, an excess risk bound at g naught rather than g hat? And when can I make sure this only depends on r of theta, not r of g? So the, the technique we'll use to analyze this is what's called Neiman orthogonality. So to define this, we need to look at the directional derivatives uh, with respect to like the target and also respect to, with respect to the uh, nuisance parameter. So these are just defined in the usual way. And what Neiman orthogonality says is if I take the partial derivative with respect to both the target and the loss, this needs to vanish when I plug in the true values. So this is just saying if I look at kind of the first order conditions for the loss, uh, these are sort of robust to changes in the nuisance parameter. And these, so there are losses that satisfy this for all the applications I mentioned. Uh, and this is what's going to lead to our kind of main robustness theorems. So our first robustness theorem says that if the loss satisfies Neiman orthogonality and some regularity conditions, then the rate you get is essentially the risk for the target class plus the uh, rate for the nuisance class, but to the power of four. So you can, uh, you can basically make your nuisance class polynomially larger than the target class without messing up the excess risk. So th this requires strong convexity with respect to the target. Um, it requires the usual kind of first order condition, meaning like either your model is well specified or your target class is convex, and it requires some basic smoothness assumptions. So of these assumptions, the strong convexity is sort of probably the least benign. And we have a second theorem that removes this. So if you have a general Lipschitz loss and it satisfies a slightly stronger version of orthogonality, but otherwise weaker technical conditions, uh, you get a similar guarantee. So these are sort of the starting point for the rest of uh, this paper. And what we use these to do is sort of bring the full power of statistical learning to bear on uh, you know, these different decision-making type problems. And I'll just show a couple of highlights here. So the first kind of uh, key result is we're able to take all the usual uh, algorithms from statistical learning that work with general function classes and derive variants that are robust to estimates and nuisance parameter. So if we do like uh, you know ERM, for ERM, the rates are sort of characterized by fixed points of local Rademacher complexity. And we show that the, uh, the nuisance error, again, only affects this up to a uh, higher order. And we derive similar guarantees for like variance penalized ERM uh, variants and uh, other, other uh, kind of ERM type methods that like aggregate over epsilon nets. So th the second highlight that we're pretty uh, excited about is that we're able to give kind of general conditions under which the, uh, the, you get the oracle rate based on like, you know, how complex is the nuisance class relative to the target class. So if the nuisance class is not too much bigger than the target class in a way that's quantified through metric entropy, uh, then you get the oracle rate. And so we have these like phase diagrams that uh, characterize sort of the feasible region for which you get oracle rates. You can check out the poster for more details on this. So just to summarize, we have a general framework for reducing uh, counterfactual decision making to statistical learning. And this is based on a nice interplay between these sort of tools from econometrics and machine learning. So we're able to take this idea of Neiman orthogonality from econometrics and use it to derive robust statistical learning guarantees. And then we're able to take uh, these statistical learning guarantees and apply these back to these decision-making problems across a variety of settings. So for the cold audience, the main thing I just want to emphasize is that we hope this will serve as a good starting point to start to explore more interesting learning theoretic questions across all these different decision problems. So thanks.